lightning. We have all seen it. But how does it work? What are the secrets behind this natural display of electricity? And how did it inspire Nikola Tesla? Let's first hear it from Richard Feynman, as he told it in his 1962 lecture. The Earth, together with its ionosphere, forms a capacitor that is charged to 400,000 volts. This capacitor leaks through our atmosphere and should be discharged in less than a minute. Lightning appears to recharge this capacitor, so it stays at roughly 400,000 volts. But how? In the thundercloud, hot air rises up, cools down and then comes back down. These up and down drafts within the electric field causes charge separation, making the top of the cloud positive and the bottom negative. At some point, a small discharge occurs from the high voltage regions in the lower part of the cloud. This triggers the formation of a so-called stepped leader. Every few microseconds, a discharge extends this leader by 20 to 30 meters until it connects to the ground. Then, the entire channel formed by this leader discharges in one violent blast, which may be followed by a number of smaller discharges over the same channel. For more detail, I refer to Feynman's lectures, which can be found online, both in written and audio format. See the link in the description. Trying to get a nucleus for freezing, and it becomes super cooled water. In fact, it doesn't. But if it touches that. So what are the weak points in this explanation? 1. The theory explaining charge separation is just that, a theory. We do not know what actually happens. 2. The required field strength of about 1 million volt per meter to initiate a discharge has never been measured in a thundercloud. 3. How does the charge that is spread over such a large area collect so fast through a non-conducting medium? 4. This process of lightning happens in the lower 10 kilometers of our atmosphere, but the ionosphere starts at roughly 50 kilometers. 5. We have negative charge discharging to an already negative Earth, increasing its charge. That looks very much like a violation of the laws of thermodynamics. How about Tesla then? What would be his explanation? Let me preface this by saying that we have to reconstruct his theory from bits and pieces in various documents, as Tesla never published this in clear and direct words. But from the hundreds of patents and articles and thousands of other documents from the museum in Belgrad, the following is the best I can do. First, we must understand how Tesla sees electricity, namely as a gaseous medium immersed in the fluid ether. Matter is formed out of this ether, and when electricity interacts with matter, charge is created. So we can, and actually we do have, electricity in the vacuum, but it needs matter to show up as charge or current as we know it. The sun is positively charged and it radiates electricity in the form of what Tesla calls primary cosmic rays. Because the sun is positively charged, these rays impart a negative charge onto the Earth. This charge builds up until an equilibrium is established where the pressure from outside equals the pressure from the inside. We know that the Earth is charged to about half a million coulomb. From the size of the Earth we can calculate its capacitance and from this its potential. This works out to be about 706 million volts. Tesla probably used a slightly different value for the Earth's charge and calculated that the Earth must have a potential of 1 billion volt. And consequently he concluded that the Sun must be at a potential of 216 billion volts. This mechanism keeps the Earth charged even though there is a constant leakage of 1800 amps through our atmosphere. Now, what happens in lightning? It's again unclear how the process starts, but once the first discharge occurs, we have a region of high pressure electricity discharging. If you see electricity as a gas, this means that its temperature and outward pressure drop. 
Because of this, electricity and heat from the surroundings is drawn in and transported to the end of the discharge, where a new high voltage region develops, together with a highly charged channel surrounding the discharge. Once enough charge has collected at the end of this initial discharge, the next discharge will occur and this process will repeat in the step leader. Once this leader connects to the ground, the channel surrounding it will discharge to the ground. The important difference to notice here is that in Tesla's explanation, the charge carried down in the lightning flash does not originate from the cloud, but from the area surrounding the leader. The charge from the cloud traveling down the leader is in the order of a few hundred microcoulomb, while the actual flash brings down up to 100,000 times more. This opens the possibility of artificially drawing electricity from our atmosphere, which was exactly what Tesla was planning to do at his Wardenclyffe plant. More on that in a future video. Electricity from our atmosphere is one of Tesla's greatest inventions. But while researching this in Colorado Springs, on the 3rd of July 1899, Tesla discovered standing waves in the Earth's electricity. This was the crown on his work. Not only could he generate power from our atmosphere without producing waste products with a machine that required virtually no maintenance, now he could also distribute this energy worldwide without wires. More on that in my previous video. So here we are now. Modern scientists are quick to dismiss anything Tesla as obvious nonsense. But is it, really? Tesla performed several experiments that we have not been able to replicate, and there were plenty of witnesses. When Tesla tested his Wardenclyffe plant in July 1903, people reported seeing sparks near their feet as they walked on the streets in New York. Just imagine what that implies. So over the last decade or so, we've been trying to recover and validate Tesla's theories. In recovering, we've been quite successful. And last year, we've gained access to well over 10,000 unpublished documents from the Tesla Museum. As for validating, we still do not have conclusive evidence, but we're not giving up. We have seen strong indications that Tesla may be correct. And that means that there is an untapped source of limitless green energy waiting to be rediscovered.